In this video, I'm going to share what I've learned about using Aurea Pro in just 24 hours. So let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today. In the previous video, I took my very first look at this, Aurea Pro, a professional digital audio workstation for your iPad. In this one, I wanna share what I've learned using it for just 24 hours. So let's jump in and take a look. Now to help you out, I've got some timestamps in the description because what we'll be doing is going through 13, because I'm feeling lucky, of the things that I have learned just playing around, talking to folks, watching tutorials and using Aurea Pro. At the end, I'm then going to go through the three things that I'm still kind of struggling with a bit. And if you're an Aurea Pro user, maybe you can help me out. Let's dive in with the first thing, and that is how to actually record MIDI. If you watched the first video, and there'll be a link up there and down in the description, you'll know that I couldn't work out how to record a MIDI instrument and you like me are going to do a giant face palm when you find out what I was missing here because it was super simple. Let's go ahead and add a new track. We'll go menu, we'll go add track and we'll add a MIDI track. We'll hit OK on that one. There is my MIDI track. Now yesterday what I was trying to do is tap here and when I was coming in here to my piano roll that was working fine and then when I came out and went to my keyboard by tapping up the top here, I couldn't work out why I was getting no sound. Well, you know what I was missing? This one little button. I, I even asked, I said, I don't really know what that button is. Well, that is to enable our MIDI. And now, like magic, there we go. We can now actually hear the sound. It was just that simple. So now if I want to record a MIDI track in, I arm my track by tapping that one, making that flash, hit the record button up here, hit play, and now, I can record, we're gonna hit stop, and that has recorded that in. We'll X out of there, there it is. You can see it's recorded that MIDI track. We come back here, we play. It's as simple as that. And if I wanna then go ahead and change my instrument, I tap here and I can choose from all of the different instruments here in the Lyra Sampler, which is Aurea's built-in instrument engine for MIDI. So there you go. Recording MIDI instruments is really not difficult at all. And now I and you know how. The second thing which I was also struggling with yesterday was in the piano roll editor. So to get there, we either tap on the keyboard there or double tap on this MIDI item. Here is our piano roll editor. Now yesterday, when I was scrolling around, I was leaving little notes everywhere and that's because I had this enabled. This is our right function. If that is on, if it's got a white outline, then every time you touch, it's going to add a note. Now we'll undo all of those. So undo button up the top here. Yes, undo notes like that. With that off, you'll notice that we can actually scroll around. When we tap on notes, it'll play them, but we can scroll around to our heart's content now and not actually touch and leave any notes behind. So if, like me, you're struggling with that here in the piano roll editor for your MIDI notes, just turn off your right function there and you'll be good to go. The third thing that I've discovered, and when I say discovered, Jade Starr told me about it. Check out Jade's series, by the way. She's doing her how-to app series, including Aurea Pro right now. So check that out. There'll be a link in the description. But what we can do here is if we go to the menu, we can actually go to the Aurea store. And there's a bunch of free things that we can get here, as well as things that we can purchase. Some of those free things include some of these add-ons. So in the Lyra samples here, if we tap on that one, it will bring us in here and look at all these free stuff that we can download here. Now I've already grabbed the rock drum kit but if I wanted to say grab this metal drum kit I just tap on that one it's going to bring me in here in just a moment and then I just tap on the free button it's going to ask me to download it it's going to make sure I confirm my identity and click my button uh, which I'm going to do double click in fact and there we go. It's going to see my face, realize it's me, and download it. So there's a bunch of free stuff in there that we can add and play around with, as well as other stuff. There you go. All set, purchased, downloading. We're good to go. Now, while we're talking about drums, I've also worked out how to record drums. The main problem was I didn't have a drum kit because I hadn't downloaded any. Now I have them. So let's turn off our record light blinking there. Let's add a new track. We'll go menu. We'll go add track. And this time we're going to do MIDI again because we want to add in one of these drum kits. Now to change our instrument, we just tap on the little drop down here and we should be able to just scroll on up. And at the top here, here are drums. Now I've only got the rock kit downloaded. That metal kit hasn't quite finished downloading 
loading yet. I was impatient because I wanted to keep showing. So we're going to add the rock kit here. And now we can go in and start playing this one. So again, we know what we need to do. Let's turn off the note there because we don't want to play our piano. We want to turn on the MIDI note here. We want to come into our keyboard by tapping the keyboard button there and... There you go. We've now got our keyboard sound here ready to play in some drums. And uh, there is also drum pads here. Now, I can't get these to work. Uh, apparently, there's a small issue with these at the moment that they're not working. So it's, apparently, it's not just me this time. I did check in with Jade, and she said that there was a small issue with those ones. But we'll go with the keyboard for now. Let's just show you how we can record in some drums, shall we? We'll go back to the start here. We will arm this track. Move our keyboard out of the way. We'll arm this track like that. We'll hit the record button and then let's uh, play in a little drum pattern here just to test these out. That's some pretty poorly recorded drum sounds there, yeah? But we get the gist here. There you go. We've now got our MIDI keyboard and our MIDI drums and we're going to race to the top of the charts with this number. off the beat and all. There you go, recording drums, really easy, really cool here in Aurea. Number five thing that I've learned that I think is pretty darn cool is our metronome. You would have heard that I've got the metronome on at the moment for both recording and playback. To set that, we go up here into the top left, we tap on this one. You can see here, metronome can be either off, it can be for recording or playback and recording. Now, I usually have it just for recording and we can also set the level of our metronome if it's too loud or too quiet. And we can do all that in here. We can add a count in, our time signature, our tempo, everything else in there. We can hit OK there. The other thing we've got is up in the top right, we've got this quick menu here, which I find super useful as well, where we can just turn the metronome on and off just at the tap of a button there. So metronome, it took me a little while to find it. Now I know where it is in two different places. I'm feeling pretty happy with myself. Number six, let's talk importing audio because I struggled big time with this yesterday. I didn't know how to bring it in from my files. I, could, I had to copy them across. So how do we do this? Well, guess what? We can actually use, if we do this gently, we can bring up our dock here at the bottom of our iPad. If we grab the files here, we can drag this out pop it over here and just let it float or use split screen or however you want to do it. And then you've got complete access to all of your different tracks here. And we can as simple as just dragging them in. So this one that I used yesterday that I've got over here in my audio share files, Imagination Drums, if I just grab and hold and drag this on across and release, it's going to copy it in and it's going to add a new audio track and pop it right there. So that is now done. We'll pop this one. We'll flick it out of the way. It's a little bit hard to do with the mouse. Let me just grab with my, with my finger. See ya. Come back soon. And then we can just position this wherever we want it. So tap and drag it. As I was saying, tap and drag it, tap and hold, and then drag it. Pete was getting impatient. I was trying to tap and drag it, but it's actually a cool function. You actually have to tap and hold for about half a second before you can drag a track around. So now that we've done that, we can bring our track back there. Let's just, uh, we'll, we'll solo this one here and take a listen and make sure these drums are all working for us here. Let's hit play. There you go, we've brought in that drum track. We haven't had to import it or do anything else. We've just grabbed it straight from our files, from our dock here in the iPad, and we are good to go. Now, thing number seven, lucky seven this time, another one that I learned from Jade that she recommended that we do here is to clean up your project. If you've been recording for a while, especially what Aurea Pro will do, because it's got such a deep undo engine, it'll keep a lot of your old takes and things that you probably don't need. So what you can do is go to your menu here, go down to settings, and this button here to clean up your project. If we tap that, it says, yep, this will clean any unused files from your project, and you need to be careful to make sure you don't want to keep any of that stuff. So back at up and don't do this if you're sort of right in the middle of something but if you know what you've got you want to clean up your project we hit yes on that and apparently this can really help with stability and making sure that your projects don't grow in size and become unmanageable here in Aurea Pro. Number eight, and this one took me a while to get used to, but it's snapping to our grid. So if we zoom in here, I really like the fact that as we zoom in, you can see here that we get these additional grid lines and we can start lining up our tracks to where we want them to be. And the more we zoom in, the more of these that we get. But you'll notice here that we don't actually have any snap to grid setting on at the moment. So if I grab this, I can actually move it to any location, which you may want for a lot of your editing, but sometimes you might want to snap it right onto a bar there. So how do we do that? Well, that's 
that's in our little grid section here. So you can see here, if we tap on this one, at the moment it's none, we can snap it to events or to our cursor, to a number of seconds, and to also to our markers and things here. So if we wanted to, we can set that. Now, if we do want to, I'm, just, I'm, I'm doing this on the fly, if we want to do it to bars and beats instead, if we go to our quick menu up here in the top right, and we go back to bars and beats, you can see this has converted our view here. So we've now got bars and beats, and if we go to our grid settings, hooray, I wasn't sure if that was the right thing. We can now add a quarter beat here, and this means that every quarter note, there they are, there's your quarter beats. It means that we have that snapping going on here, and if we grab and move this one, there you go. It's going to snap into all of those quarter beat sections, making it nice and easy. We want to bring this down here to this section, to this next bar. We let go, and there you go. We are good to go. So controlling your snap to grid options, pretty simple here in Aurea Pro. Now, I realized I just showed this in the last one, but number nine is changing from our time to our bars and beats, which uh, if we tap in the top right there, you can see we've got. We've got minutes, seconds, samples, bars and beats, or SMPTE, which I definitely know what means. Who says I don't? So we could actually change that around here. It's actually really cool because if you want to quickly know how far you are in there, no problem. You can use the time there if you're more used to your more analog recording. If you're more on the grid using some virtual stuff, well, then you'll want your bars and beats. And as we've already showed, all of your other settings will change based on whether you're in time mode or bars and beats mode. So I think that's really simple and a really effective way to have it set up here in your DAW. Let's jump into some editing because this one threw me a bit to start with, but I'm getting there. Let's talk about trimming items here. So we've got a few items here that we may want to trim. Uh, let's just zoom this one back out to here. Now, while these are zoomed out like this, it's actually really easy to see this. So what I might do is I'll add in a bunch of tracks so that you can feel the pain that I had before of why I couldn't work out how to do this. All right, I've just added in 10 random audio tracks just to show you why I couldn't work this out because as you know, to move items around, we tap and hold, wait for them to turn that transparent color and then we can move them around. If we want to make sure that they're snapping into place, we can use our grid here to do our quarter beats and then they're gonna snap nicely, tap and hold, it's gonna snap nicely onto the grid. But what about, I, it, I was struggling with this. I couldn't work out how to trim. Didn't seem to have any trim handles at the end here. Well, what I needed to do and what you would need to do in this case is to actually zoom in because you'll notice that the more you zoom in the more of these trim handles that you're actually getting so you actually have a bunch of different handles here that you can actually use so let's show you how to use each one of these now the trim function is one that you're probably going to want to use a lot. I know that I do. And to use these, we grab these bottom arrows, tap and hold, and then you can see you've got that big arrow there. We drag this around. We want this to just go right onto there. We do the sa that. The same thing down here. We grab this arrow, we drag it, we release it, and that is good to go. The same thing at the front end here. Grab onto this handle, trim the front here, and as you get to each note, it's going to trim that down. So that's super simple, but we just needed to be at that zoom level. And you can see if we zoom out a little bit we've still got the trim handles there the more that we zoom in though the trim handles are going to go away so zoom in and you'll be able to trim your items like a pro the other arrows you may have seen there are for our fades and this is super cool we can manage our fade in and fade out right here if we zoom on in we can actually grab in the top right here grab and hold and we can fade that one you've got different fade shapes up the top here that we can change so if you've never played with fades before this is basically just going to ramp off the volume and then the same can be done at the start here we can tap and hold and drag this one and then again do a different sort of fade shape so this will fade in be at that level of volume and then fade out again the other cool thing we can do here is actually grab this handle and bring it on down so our max Maximum volume can be reduced down here so you can change your volume. It's cool here with our MIDI, but it's even cooler with our audio instruments. And I'll show you why here now. If we grab on this imagination drums down here, we tap and hold, we do that same fade in there. Look at what it's doing to our actual waveform. You're getting a visual representation of the fade. So if we do one of these more sort of aggressive fades, look at that. It's going to fade those drums in. And again, we can tap and hold and control our fade. The same thing with the top here. If we zoom, if we zoom out and enough to get the top here we can grab the top section and bring this on down and look at those waveforms those stereo waveforms are going to go lower based on the overall volume i find that that is pretty cool if we now solo this and come to the start of this let's take a listen to this nicely fading in drums at the start of this track
Super cool, really easy way to manage your fades and manage your overall volume of your audio items here in Aurea Pro. Next up, we have looping items. So this took me a little while to work out because there's obviously the, the straightforward way to loop something would be to grab this, to tap copy, to put our playhead where we want that and hit paste. And we can obviously do that again and again. But you may have noticed that when we're at our zoom, most zoomed in level, we also had this little item over on the right hand side. So if we grab this, what this allows us to do is is actually loop out. Now I find this really cool because we can just grab that and then loop our pattern for as far as we want and it will just duplicate and repeat. We've also got a duplicate button which you can see down here. We can tap and duplicate and in that case it's put it right there. Let's just try that again. We'll tap this one, we'll tap duplicate and it's going to add it. So there's a bunch of different ways to loop it but I really like the fact that we have that simple looping option at the end there that you can just grab and loop out to your heart's content. And last but not least of our 13 at least in my view, is our tempo settings. Now, this is pretty cool. We can tap here on our tempo and we can tap in a tempo, but look what it gives us there. When we're tapping in a tempo, yeah, it gives us decimal points. That's super handy if you're bringing in loops that are at something like 86.2 or 100.3. We can actually do that. We've also got all of these delicious time signatures that we can do, which is pretty cool here. And what I find useful is that we can actually type directly in here. So if we had that 110.5, we can, I'm using a keyboard, but you can use the on-screen keyboard and it can actually, if you actually hit enter at the end, 110.5, hit enter, it'll actually give you that exact tempo. So this one's 110, so we don't need that. But I find having all of these different options so much more useful because it just gives you that flexibility of getting your tempo exactly where you want it. So there you go, 24 hours, and I'm already getting pretty comfortable and familiar with Aurea Pro. There are three things I wanted to mention here at the end, and if you've got advice on these ones, I'm all ears. Number one is MIDI loops and patterns. So there's, unlike other things, unlike Cubasis and unlike GarageBand especially, there's not a whole lot in the way of MIDI loops and things. So you are creating your own MIDI loops here in sequences, which is okay, especially if you've got it, your own MIDI keyboard. But I would like to see more of that. Maybe there's some hidden there in the weeds. Let me know if that is the case. The other thing is adding new tracks is a little bit non-intuitive. I would have expected some sort of button that we can add. Maybe there's another way to do it, but the only way I've found so far is to go menu and add track. Now you've got a heap of flexibility here. You can add multiple tracks and you can do all of that stuff there. So that's all cool. And when you're importing, it actually asks you how many tracks and it'll add those to a new track. So it's not that hard. It just seems weird that with all of these buttons and all of these dials here, that we don't have one that's just a simple big add track button and the final thing is the loops and samples so like a, like we have here with our midi items there's not a whole lot in the way of drum loops and, and sort of sampled instrument loops they're the few that i've found in the weeds there that i've been able to bring in but there's not a whole heap there now that's uh, probably because we've got a heap here in the aurea store so as we showed you before there are a bunch in here and we can come in here and find a bunch of multi-track loops and other loops and things which you can obviously buy here to bring in a bunch of different sounds so there's definitely options there. Plus, don't forget you can bring in any of your own audio files. There's nothing stopping you bringing Apple Loops in from GarageBand, downloading from places like freesound.org or anywhere else where you can grab some free samples to bring them in here to Aurea Pro. But that is going to do it. What do you think so far? I'm pretty impressed. Yes, the learning curve has been steeper than GarageBand and Cubasis that we've been using and exploring in the past, but the power of this one is undeniable. There is so much going on here. Please subscribe if you're not already and join me because we've got more videos left in this series. We'll be hooking up a MIDI keyboard. We'll be recording some guitars and vocals and really putting Aurea Pro to the test. Hope to see you on the next one.